Hey. Yep, it's a Tuesday, and you know that means it's time to make another vinyl update. Actually, I um, don't really have a set day to make a vinyl update. It's just whenever I get up the, uh, well, I won't say the energy. I've always got energy. Um, when I have the time and when I'm not doing something else, which I guess that's the way it is with everyone out there. So I got some stuff here. It's, uh, this is my more or less metal, rock and metal update. So I'll start off with some CDs here that I picked up that I actually, I don't have these on CD. I do have them on vinyl. Um, well, most of them on vinyl. So I picked this one up. If I can hold on to it. Poison. Look what the cat dragged in. And uh, this is one of their best ones, I think. Their first two albums are the best ones. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's the same picture on the inside. And this has, you know, Cry Tough, I Want Action, I Won't Forget You, Talk Dirty to Me was the singles. Uh, then I also got this one. This is the one of the remasters, Quiet Riot Metal Health. Um, this was the first number one heavy metal, quote-unquote heavy metal album in the 80s. First one to go to number one, I should say. Um, and this has Metal Health, uh, Come On Feel the Noise, was the singles. Um, Thunderbird's a really good song, and Slick Black Cadillac, I remember hearing that one. Uh, this is another remaster, Europe, the Final Countdown. And uh, this has bonus tracks on it, same as the Quiet Riot one. Uh, Rock the Night, Carrie, title track, Cherokee, those were singles. Has uh, Carrie Live on here, also the Final Countdown Live from Hammersmith Odeon. Uh, this one I'd seen <clears throat> ever since it first came out, and for some reason it's like super expensive. And I don't know why, I mean, it's just a CD, I mean it's a double CD, but it's the Scorpions, the Mercury Years. It's uh, called Deadly Sting. I mean, it has all their good stuff, and it has some sort of unusual songs. A few that I'm not familiar with. Um, and I found this used. Whoops. So, I think it was like six ninety nine or something like that. And it has uh, 16 songs on the first disc and 17 on the second one. The last two on the second one was previously unreleased. Um... I mean, can't beat that. Uh, this is a band that I'd mentioned in one of my videos recently. A fairly new band. I think they have two albums, maybe three. This is the Rival Sons. This is their new one. This one's called... Uh, can't even see that. Great. I can't see anything. That's written on there like with a pencil almost. what it looks like. Great Wishes Valkyrie. I think. Anyway, this is the the um, tour edition. It's two discs, two disc, and this band is a very rock and roll band. You know, it's a very classic band. If you're not familiar with them, check them out. Of course, those other bands. If you're not familiar with them, check them out. But probably a lot of you are. Um, moving on to a couple books that I picked up recently. I bought this one this weekend. It's called Vinyl. Uh, it's The Art of Making Records, and this actually has grooves on it. It's groovy, you might say. And this is chronological. It starts here with um, the 1940s. Well, it starts in the early years before that. It goes from the 1940s all the way up to way past 2000. I mean, this book came out in 2015, so it's went all the way up to there. Starts out with um, Thomas Edison and goes through into, uh, you know, the folk music revival, into, you know, hard rock and heavy metal. Uh, pretty much everything in between. It goes into record stores, talks about that. Um, sub pop label, you know, everything's included. So, if you see this out, pick it up. It was only $25. Uh, found mine at Barnes & Noble, so... That's a really cool book. This is another book I meant to show in my last vinyl update, and I forgot it. This one's called The Art of Metal. I don't think I showed this. 
If I did, then oh well, you're seeing it again. Uh, this is five decades of heavy metal album covers, posters, t-shirts, and more. And this, I bought this r right before uh, Lemmy had passed away from Motorhead. And he does the forward in this book. So that was sort of, you know, and it has a signature there from uh, 2013. But this goes into all different kinds of music. Uh, the when it comes to metal, uh, here let me just read the chapters really quickly. Uh, starts out with I don't know if I can. I don't think it does like that. Where is the index, Mister? Oh, here we go. Uh, starts out with the origins, traditional metal. Uh, the new wave of British heavy metal, hair metal, doom and stoner, new metal, black metal, thrash, death, prog, and then everything in between is in subcategories. But yeah, if you see this somewhere, I want to pick it up. It wasn't expensive either. Yeah, really cool book. And on to the vinyl. I got a little bit of stuff here. Uh, this I ordered from Hell's Headbangers, and I want to mention... Um, uh, I, on my last metal update, I don't remember what it was I showed. I think it was Archgoat's, uh, the most recent Archgoat CD. And, uh, Sean commented, uh, Count Blagareth. And I also forgot to mention, he's another one of the guys that shows a lot of metal that I really enjoy watching his channel. Uh, he suggested that I order this before they sold out. And I was actually lucky enough to get one. It's a Satanic Warmaster, an Archgoat, uh, split. It's called a Lux Satanic, I think is how you pronounce it. 13 hymns of Finnish Devil Worship. I was amazed that I was able to get one of these. Uh, you know, because right after I read his comment, I jumped on it and ordered it, and I was lucky enough that I didn't mess around, but I actually got one. It comes with this insert here. And it's, you know, underground, black metal. Is what I would call it. I mean, I'm not a professional at labeling stuff, but just to look at the band and listen to the, what I've heard, I mean, I'd, I'd call it black metal. It's on black vinyl, how appropriate. And uh, one side is Archgoat, if you can see that. And the other side is Satanic Warmaster. So, thanks a lot, Sean, for uh, filling me in on that. I'm glad that, uh, glad that I was able to get one. And I wasn't even aware that this was out until he had mentioned it. So, But if you're uh, into underground metal, thrash, death, uh, black metal, and anything you know that's really satanic and uh, gory lyric-wise, check out Hell's Headbangers because they have all the good stuff. Um, Saturday I went out to um, one record store that we go to. Uh, and, um, actually brought someone else with us, uh, uh, a guy that I work with, uh, wanted to go, I invited him to go to, uh, check out the record store, because he'd never been there, so anyway, uh, what I'd picked up was something I'd never seen before, this is Motley Crue, this is the original KMET-FM broadcast in 1982, uh, it's called, uh, Live at Perkins Palace, Pasadena, California, November 8th, or excuse me, November 11th, 1982. Um, and that's this is one of my favorite pictures of Motley Crue, my, one of my favorite eras of Shout at the Devil. And this was recorded in 82, so it was right before Shout at the Devil came out. There's the label, same on both sides. Uh, and it has, it has a sort of an unusual track listing, I thought. Um, and it has like uh, it has uh, songs from the first two albums, which you would expect. But then it also has a song called "Running Wild in the Night" in the night, and a song called "Hotter Than Hell." And I think, and I haven't listened to this yet. I think that's a demo version of "Louder Than Hell," which appeared later on Theater of Pain. But the other song, <clears throat> I'll have to look into it. I'm not real sure. 
running wild in, in the night. I'm not really sure what that came from. But anyway, this is on Bad Joker Records. So that was a really cool find to see that. And another one that I uh, also know that this is out on vinyl. I'd seen a different version of this at a different record store about a month ago. And I sort of wish I'd have got it, but this one's cooler. I mean, I don't know. It just looks cooler. It's called uh, Guns N' Roses. It's so easy. And this is also on Bad Joker Records. Uh, this is live at the Ritz, uh, New York, February 2nd, 1988. And it's a Westwood One FM broadcast. This was also an MTV concert. Uh, I I had a VHS copy where I recorded this concert, and I played it to death. So this was really special to get a hold of because I just love the concert. And, you know, it's, it's Axel had actually said that he, he thought that the sound was terrible uh, in this concert because they were having issues with the feedback or the mics and stuff, I guess. But I love the concert. If you're not familiar with this, check it out. It's on YouTube. The um, video of this is on YouTube. Um, they do Knockin' on Heaven's Door, which they used to play on FM radio here a lot. Um, that This version, I mean. Um, and they do Mama Ken, which was not on the original broadcast. I mean, you can see it on YouTube. but um, And the version of Paradise City is just like... Can't get any better than that. And during... Uh, or not Paradise City, Rocket Queen, but yeah, Paradise City too. But uh, during uh, Paradise City, Axel jumps into the crowd, and he's wearing a Thin Lizzy shirt, and the crowd just rips him to pieces. You know, they got a hold of his hair, and they rip his necklaces off, and try to rip his rings off his finger, and he, the bodyguards are practically cutting his shirt and ripping him, trying to get him back up on stage, and the song's still playing, you know. Slash is laying on his back, you know, and still playing the solo, and... They finally get him back up on stage, and he just, like, right, like he never missed a beat. You know, he's just right back into it. It's like, I just thought Axl Rose and Guns N' Roses were the coolest band, you know, in the 80s. I just thought they were the coolest band, because I'd never seen a band so, they just didn't care. They just did whatever they wanted to do, and they didn't care. I mean, there were other bands like that, too. Um, Metallica comes to mind, early Metallica. But uh, I always thought Guns N' Roses was cool. So anyway, uh, this is one that um, the guy that went with us, he's flipping through records, and I always I told my girlfriend, if I see another record from them, I'm going to buy it. Because I'd seen one a while back, and I didn't get it, and I've been kicking myself. Uh, this is The Mummies. Tales from the Crypt. Take a look at that. And the back is just pure white. And the sleeve and the label is pure white. So it has the song listing, black vinyl. It has the song listing on the front. Um, I'm assuming I'm assuming that this is a do-it-yourself record. It was in the punk section of this record store we went to. Um, it has uh, five songs on side one and six songs on. Excuse me, on five two or on side two, blah blah blah. So I was uh, pretty excited to get that one. I'm glad that uh, I've always said, you know, the more people you bring with you, I mean, it's sort of competition or can be, but the more people you have with you, the more you know they see stuff that that maybe you don't see. So uh, this I bought at Half Price Books. It was really a good price. This is uh, Van Halen's first album, obviously. Uh, this was an upgrade for me. This one's like in mint condition. The one that I had, I don't think had the original sleeve. So, I picked this one up just for the sake of upgrading, and it was such a good price. You know, it's got a little scuff or two here and there, but it's it's still, like I said, it's, it's a major upgrade. And I noticed that and I'm assuming it's just by the record labels, or maybe first, second pressings. But some records from the 70s and or 80s are flimsy, like super flimsy. And then others are like seem like they're really sturdy. Is that because the first pressings are the sturdy ones and the second pressings are not? 
or is it the record label that's just cheap? What is that out there? Does anybody know this? I'm not real clear on it, but, you know, maybe I'm just used to 180 gram. I don't know. Uh, this was at this was at the thrift store, uh, Joe's Garage by Frank Zappa. This is Act 1. Is that what it's called? Uh, yes. So at a thrift store, hello, 99 cents for Frank Zappa. I'll take it. And I didn't have this one. Even if I did have it, I would have bought it anyway for that. And, uh, let's see here. It's got the original sleeve with it. Sort of got a little fold there. And it's got like two sleeves in here. There's the record on Zappa Records. And, uh, yeah, I mean, well, this folds out. This is like that. So, I mean, it would be cool if I'd have found several more, but it was cool to find just one. I mean, Frank Zappa, I remember Frank Zappa in the 80s, what I knew about him, which I didn't know very much. I thought, you know, that music is just, it's just unlistenable. But that's when my tastes were like, you know, it had to be all metal or, or it just wasn't cool. You know, I sort of outgrew that, I think. Because I, I, I want to just say that, I mean, I love metal, rock and metal. And, but if you've watched my videos at all, you know that I, I can appreciate any kind of music for what it's worth. And there's so many artists out there, it doesn't matter what genre of music that they play. You know, there's there's a lot of talent. Now, granted, there's a lot of um, a lot of people out there making music that's not talented, but we won't go into that. The last one I have to show in this video is uh, there's a movie I seen back in the '70s, and I just remember bits and pieces of it um, because it wasn't on TV. I guess I don't know if I'd seen the previews at a theater or maybe I did see the whole movie at one time. But anyway, it's called The Phantom of the Paradise. Um, <clears throat> And I already had this on vinyl, but this is sort of a chewed up copy. It was at, at uh, Goodwill, too, so I went ahead and picked it up. Um, Paul Williams is in this movie, and um, William Finney. It's a Brian De Palma movie. Um, and what, what makes it so interesting to me is um, it's a rock opera type of movie. Um, there's the band, one of the bands and the singer and stuff that's in the movie it wears makeup and sort of like, um, let's see, this came out in, so I want to say 74. Um, I don't see a date. Imagine that. Anyway, I know it was early 70s. Could have been 72. There it is, 74. I was right. Uh, so that was before Kiss, but they were wearing makeup sort of like Kiss. I don't know if that's a coincidence or if someone influenced someone else. Um, and I also heard later that, um, I don't know if it was Nikki Six or Vince Neil from Motley Crue said that they got some of their ideas from the from that movie on like stuff they did on their first tour. Their first stage was sort of the some of the props and things they used, but... So anyway, that's all I have to show in this video. Hope you enjoyed the stuff. So, thanks for the subscribers. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And if you subscribe to me, I'll subscribe to you. That's how it works. Um, I just want to encourage anyone watching this video. If you've watched my videos, if you watch any of the VC videos, uh, anyone that's in the vinyl community... I hope you get inspired enough to make your own videos, you know, showing your collections, uh, rather it be vinyl or um, preferably vinyl if you're in the vinyl community, I guess. But, you know, you see me show CDs and I show books and stuff, and then I also make separate videos. But I encourage anyone out there, it's not that hard. You know, I can do it. Anybody can do it. Um, if you don't like being on camera, I totally understand that. A lot of people don't. Um, but you can just... Hold up records. 
you know, play some some music in the background or talk over it, you know, just whatever you want to do. Uh, I like to see new new people join the uh, VC and show their collections and what they're into. So I'll quit rambling, and we'll see you in the next video. Yeah.